It's official. Star Trek Strange New World Season 2 Episode 3 finally confirmed what many Star Trek fans have suspected for some time. Star Trek has three timelines. There is of course the original timeline introduced during the original series in 1966 with William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy as Captain Kirk and Mr. Spock. Then we have the Kelvin timeline created by the J.J. Abrams Star Trek 2009 movies with Chris Pine and Zachary Quinto as Kirk and Spock. And finally, we have the new timeline, which we first saw in Star Trek Discovery in 2017, where Paul Wesley and Ethan Peck play Kirk and Spock. Now, surprise, surprise, there is some controversy surrounding the new timeline, but we'll show you the evidence is overwhelming and irrefutable. I need more information. Why did these events take place? Who is responsible? And more importantly, is it a good or bad thing for Star Trek? The answers may surprise you, so you don't want to miss this episode. And make sure you stay tuned until later where we'll show you why Dave.com can provide a useful tool to help you with your finances. Money, money. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please do so now. And give us a thumbs up if you want more honest pop culture like this. And stay tuned to the end to see how to get this awesome Star Trek design from the amazing artists at MixTees.com. Ready to sell this? Ready as I'll ever be. Oh yeah, Ooh. that's good. Lordy. <laughs> The first thing we want to make clear is that no matter what Star Trek shows or movies you love, there is no judgment here. We all like what we like. Just like the divisive Enterprise theme song, love it or hate it, it's okay. Taste is a first person activity. But now we're canceled, they can kiss my ass. They can go to hell. They should have made me captain anyhow. Put me in the cat suit as well. And yes, you aren't crazy. That was Dominic Keating singing his version of the Enterprise theme song. But while taste is subjective, the rules of the Star Trek universe are not. And those rules are pretty simple whether we always like them or not. The main one is that whatever happens in a Star Trek show or movie that was created by the IP holder is canon. Come on. It's canon. Sometimes it makes us cheer and sometimes it makes us cry. But regardless, that's the rule. Whether it was our joy that Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan cements Kirk and Spock's platonic love for each other in that moment where Kirk sees Spock's empty seat and runs to engineering suspecting the sacrifice his friend just made, or our dismay that Spock had an adopted older human sister who committed mutiny on a Federation starship and caused the Klingon War. Yeah, that one's still tough. And I didn't really like it. But regardless, these are things that happened on screen and were sanctioned by the owners of Star Trek. Therefore, it's canon. What you can't do is radically change something in Star Trek's history and then wave a magic wand and say it didn't change anything. I mean, a Romulan mining vessel went back in time and destroyed the USS Kelvin during the birth of Captain Kirk, and it created a whole new timeline. Surely, Romulan subverting humanity's development in the late 20th and early 21st centuries, along with moving the birth of Khan, the eugenics wars, and World War III more than 50 years into the future, easily created an alternate timeline but we are getting a little ahead of ourselves. Today we'll be talking about three official timelines, but there is evidence of a fourth timeline created when the Borg went to Earth during the events of Star Trek First Contact. If you want to know more about that, check out our Star Trek Secret Reboot video right after this one. They must have done it in the past. They went back and assimilated Earth, changed history. The original timeline kept churning out new shows for more than 40 years. The original series, The Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, and Enterprise. As we'll show you, we bounced around timelines for a bit and then came back to the original timelines for the events of Star Trek Picard. I'm reluctant to ask you all to face this threat again. Jean-Luc, wherever you go, we go. Picard takes place after the introduction of the Kelvin timeline and actually provides more information on the catastrophic event that started the alternate timeline in the first place. There are no words to describe the calamitous scale of that change. So why did J.J. Abrams break the mold and decide to reboot Star Trek and how did that choice end up hurting the original timeline? Buckle up. Before we break all that down, let me quickly tell you why you are going to love this video sponsor, Dave.com. We've all had that moment when we need a little financial help, but payday is still several days away. Finances can be so intimidating, and that's why you need Dave. Dave is the banking app that's leveling the financial playing field. When you download Dave, 
you could get up to $500 in five minutes or less. No credit check, no late fees. It's part of Dave's extra cash account. Advance the money you need with no interest and then settle up later. Dave fights for the underdog and has millions of members, from eliminating overdraft fees to fee-free goal tracking and a focus on building products that level the financial playing field, Dave is like David slaying Goliath, taking on big banks in their predatory ways. Dave is transparent by being honest and straightforward and is member-centric, always seeking to address the wants and needs of the people they serve. Download Dave today at dave.com slash popcast. That's dave.com slash popcast. You could get up to $500 in five minutes or less. No credit check, no late fees. Download the Dave app now or go to dave.com slash popcast. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Eligibility criteria and instant transfer fees apply. Banking services provided by Evolve, member FDIC. Give Dave a try today. Oh, I, I like money. Yeah. When it comes to the Star Trek 2009 reboot, if you ask one of the writers, Robert Orsi, if it's a reboot, he'll tell you it absolutely is not. He said he and fellow writer Alex Kurtzman never once considered a clean slate. Yes, that is the Alex Kurtzman currently in charge of Star Trek now. It isn't a coincidence. If I were ever to do this again, I need to have a brand new reason to do it. And I, I want to defy people's expectations. They see the 2009 movie as a sequel because the movie starts in the original universe. That decision would have further ramifications on the original timeline moving forward, as we'll see. Which is ironic because Orsi's story being connected to the original universe was to provide an entry for longtime fans. Later, that change would also change the tone of Star Trek during the events of Picard. J.J. Abrams and his team allowed original timeline Spock to create a black hole using red matter to absorb the Romulan sun going supernova. I was en route when the unthinkable happened. The supernova destroyed Romulus. That black hole was the entry into JJ's new timeline. The thing Abrams didn't consider is the ramifications that supernova would have in the timeline he was taking us out of. While the Kelvin timeline was exploring a variant TOS Enterprise team, the aftermath of the supernova became the legacy of Jean-Luc Picard in Picard Season 1, where the Federation was the bad guy and a dark dystopia had infiltrated the original timeline. In all fairness, Star Trek Discovery had already delivered tonally different Star Trek where the future was bleak, so perhaps Picard was following Star Trek head Alex Kurtzman's vision for the future. A traitor slaughtered a Klingon infant. But we didn't know at the time that Star Trek Discovery was actually in a totally different timeline than Star Trek Picard. We're calling this the new timeline. In fact, no one knew it was in a different timeline until the second season of Strange New Worlds. They're not supposed to develop that technology for at least 100 years. What kind of technology a time-traveling assassin might use? This new timeline includes Discovery, Strange New Worlds, and Lower Decks, as all three of these shows have been tied together. As we explained earlier, the events that branched this timeline off from the original actually occurred somewhere around 1992. Although we haven't seen them, it's likely that more than one timeline was branched off, thanks to time cops and Romulans who can't seem to stop screwing with time, as we've seen during Strange New World Season 2, Episode 3. In that episode, titled Tomorrow, Tomorrow, and Tomorrow, La'an Nunyan Singh finds herself traveling back in time with Wesley's Captain Kirk to stop someone from changing the Strange New World's timeline. Because she is a descendant of Khan Nunyan Singh, La'an is chosen by the 29th Century Department of Temporal Investigation to make things right. This will turn out to not make much sense considering the larger implications of what happened. La'an and Kirk are zapped to Toronto in 2022, home of one Khan Noonien Singh. And if some of that sounds odd, the strangest thing is that in this timeline, Khan is about eight years old. That's right, the Khan we know from the original series, Episode Space Seed, and Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan came to power as a full-grown man in 1992. Khan's birth year in canon is 1959. During the events of Strange New Worlds, he would have been born around 2014. That means Khan's birth and all the events surrounding Earth have been moved forward 50 to 55 years. If the destruction of the USS Kelvin creates a branch timeline, then surely moving Earth forward 50 years around the events of Khan, the Eugenics Wars, and World War III will also create a branch timeline. Well, yeah, of course, dummy. The reason why, we find out, is because Romulans from the 21st century have been slowing human in progress for years, and a Romulan from the future has been trying to kill Khan for 30 years. 
But apparently, tons of people have been trying to influence the events of Khan and the eugenics wars. They've tried to delay them or stop them, and even whole temporal wars have been fought over the events of the 1990s and the eugenics wars. The explanation for the time change seems to be the result of time pushing back, according to the female Romulan from the future trying to kill Khan. And all this was supposed to happen back in 1992, and I've been trapped here for 30 years! And if this is the case, and time is pushing back, that means she's tried to change the timeline many, many, many times. Just like in Stephen King's 112263 novel, where the main character keeps going back in time to save JFK from being assassinated, but time itself is trying to stop him. <laughs> that is so trippy. This is a totally new concept for Star Trek, but surely all these time shenanigans have also caused other ripples in time. This means more alternate timelines we haven't even seen yet. Well, as we mentioned before, this is where some of the controversy is taking place. Even though, as we've shown you, smaller events have created branch timelines, Strange New World showrunner Akiva Goldsman is insisting that the timeline hasn't changed despite moving core dates and events in Star Trek history. His reason for doing this was because if he didn't, Star Trek would cease to exist in our actual future. He explained that he wants Star Trek to be an aspirational future. He wants humanity to be able to dream their way into the Federation as a star fleet, and in order to do that, he needed to push the dates forward. Besides the fact that Star Trek is not our actual future, the whole idea that you can change the history of Earth in the past and not have it impact the future is ridiculous. You fellas have a lot of growing up to do, I'll tell you that. Ridiculous. Completely ridiculous. And it's troublesome that Goldsman and whoever helped to make this decision doesn't think we are intelligent enough to be inspired by Star Trek if it's not in our actual future. And I don't know if Goldsman realizes it or not, but he has broken logic. How can Khan meet Kirk at a specific place in time in 2267 if he left decades later? Based on this new timeline, Khan won't take power until the 2040s, World War III won't happen until the 2070s, and when USS Botany Bay arrives at its future coordinates to be woken up in 2297, Kirk won't be there, because 2297 is four years after Kirk is thought dead and disappeared into the Nexus. Wrap your head around that and tell me there isn't a new timeline. And, oh yeah, no more Wrath of Khan. No. No, 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 no. What's the matter? No, 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 no. So, regardless of whether Goldsman wants to embrace it or not, the rules of canon apply. If you put it on screen, it counts. And this move created a whole new timeline. And honestly, it would be better for Goldsman to embrace it. And this would help explain all of the differences we've seen. The ships are way larger than in the original timeline. Check out the Discovery and Strange New Worlds interiors and tell us we are on the same ships as the original timeline. Kirk was supposed to be the first Starfleet person to meet a Gorn. It's very clear in the Arena episode during TOS. Scotty, Uhura, and Spock are all there with Kirk and they have never heard of a Gorn either. How about a Klingon war during Discovery that TOS never mentions? Hostilities, yes. Perhaps even the start of a war. But no war in the past and definitely not one that a Starfleet officer started because of mutiny. Spock knows all about the mirror universe during Discovery, but it's foreign to him in TOS. Kirk, upon hearing Khan's name, doesn't say, oh yes, La'on. Of course you have emotional Spock, Spock's sister, Pike seeing his future, emotional Spock, dancing and singing Spock, a T'Pring no one is supposed to know, emotional Spock. Yeah, you can see some of these things have stayed with us. No! God, please, no! The fact that there is three Star Trek timelines isn't necessarily a bad thing. Now, when something happens that doesn't line up with the original timeline, we can say, oh, that's right, new timeline. And while there will be legacy fans that don't want to watch new Star Trek, even though it is a branch timeline, Paramount would be surprised by how many fans would stop arguing and just accept it for what it is. Star Trek Wars! And the new timeline doesn't mean the original timeline is dead. Stories can still be told in a new Star Trek legacy show by Terry Metalis. Yes, we are going to will this into existence. Paramount, let's put aside Starfleet Academy and make a show following the events of Picard Season 3 that most fans will be excited about. Oh. God, yes. Absolutely. But what do you think? Is Star Trek better having this third timeline, or does it all have to work in the original timeline? Would you like new Star Trek more, knowing it's in an alternate timeline? Let's talk about it in the comments below. And also, don't forget our Star Trek-inspired design in our store. Get 20% off your purchase by using coupon code THEPOPCAST. The link is in the description below. Until next time. Why have you... Why you only calling us when you got your dramas?